Block displays are some of the most versatile things in Minecraft. They have seemingly infinite uses, and people have created some crazy stuff with them. But I think I may have found my new favorite use for them. I created a sort of 3D printer using tiny block displays, so that you can shrink any of your builds down to the size of a single block. Admittedly, this has been possible before, but you had to make a 3D model in something like Blender or Blockbench, and hand texture the entire model, and after all that, you still have to make it into a resource pack and constantly have that resource pack on, otherwise it doesn't look like anything. With this printer that I made though, you don't have to use any third party programs, you don't have to apply a resource pack, you can just run two commands and it will print your whole build block for block. That being said, there are some, some issues with this printer that are probably worth discussing before you just throw this into your world. But to understand these problems, I'm gonna explain to you how the printer actually works. No, no, I don't wanna go to the tutorial. No! So this grid is 16 by 16, and for both the printer and the template that you're printing from, you'll have an index. So for just an example, I'm using this armor stand. So it'll move forward to this block. It'll check what block is in the template, and then it'll summon the same block as a block display in the printer. And once it finishes that, it'll just move on to the next block. So just as an example, if I run these command blocks they're going to teleport the armor stand along this row and as it's going it's going to clone the block from below it above it so it should just do um all right so there's been a bit of a miscalculation luckily all we have to do to fix that is just teleport them back in the z direction okay that should be good and then there we go would you look at that it works like a chunk Once it finishes this first layer and gets here, it'll just teleport all the way back to the beginning over here, except it'll just be one block higher. And it'll keep doing that until it completes the whole 16 by 16 by 16 volume. So that means all we have to do is replace this clone command right here with a command that will copy the block into a tiny little block display somewhere else. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well that should be easy enough. All you have to do is replace this one little command with another single command. No, it's not that simple. Unless you know something I don't about these commands, in which case, please show me. Because this next method that I use is just... It's just disappointing. Say I wanted to map the data of the block that I'm standing on onto this tiny little block display right here. You'd think that there would be some sort of way to use the execute store command to store the data of the block into the block display, but that doesn't actually work because as you can see right here, the block display data is actually stored as a string, and you can only map the number values in Minecraft over to the block display. So that idea is out. Someone might have the idea just to run an if loop on the block and say if it's this block, then write that data to the block display, which is exactly right. Right, that's actually what I did, but it's so much worse than you think it is. You have to run an individual if command to check what block it is for every single block in the game. This is why I will reiterate, if you know a way to do this dynamically, please leave a comment. Luckily, we can make this a little easier just by copying and pasting from this list of every block in the game. So now I can just paste it into this data pack file and I have the full list. And then we want this to run for every block, so I'll write this command. So now I can grab this first part before the block value, copy this, and then paste it for every block. Okay, how many lines is this? 9.33. You know what, there, there has to be a better way to do this. Microsoft Excel. I can copy the list of blocks into a single column on here, write the command on one of them, and then just drag it all the way down. That auto fills that command to the very bottom, and then I can copy the entire table in one go and paste the whole thing. Now we're getting somewhere. Check it out. It's uh, doing the, the thing. That's pretty sick. After I apply this to that armor stand example from earlier, the project should be almost finished. There's one just minor problem that I think might be worth mentioning. So this is the world that I've just been messing around in. I just created this monstrosity. Uh, it perfectly fits in a chunk. Not the red wool though, that's just to make sure it doesn't print anything outside of the chunk. But everything else in here, all the lines and stuff, those will just print uh, directly in here. So here's this whole thing printed in a one by one by one volume. Block for block, it matches perfectly. There are no issues. There are no issues. If you're not picking up on the hint, um, let me just point it out. The staircases are facing the wrong directions. The fences don't connect. And it doesn't even do water. So, uh, there's a lot of issues. Who could have guessed with a project like this? 
to be honest, I have zero intention of fixing this because it is actually just impossible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Hear me out. When you summon a block display for a staircase, it'll show up in its default state, which is just like this. And to get all the different variations, whether they're facing different directions, or if they have a different shape, basically every single variation is different. And because of that, you need an individual command for every variation. So let's do some math for that really quickly. For a simple oak staircase, there will be four different faces, so that's four times uh, top or bottom, that's two, times the shape, which has five variations, times five, times whether or not it's waterlogged, which has two, so that's two. So we've got 80 different variations for oak stairs. <sighs> Keep in mind, each one of these variations corresponds to an individual line of code. Let's, let's just assume, I don't actually want to figure it out, but let's just assume that there are about 20 different staircases in the game. Okay, that is 1,600 lines of code that I have to add. I don't want to do this no more. And that's just for staircases. That's not including all the different variations of fences, all the different variations of glass panes, every axis that a log could be switched on, every position of a door, every direction of a chest. You get the idea. So I guess it is technically possible and someone out there could do it, but I'm, I'm not that guy. It especially sucks because I like to use stairs and fences and stuff like that for details in my builds, and the printer only prints 16 by 16 by 16 blocks, so you lose a lot of detail. A potentially good workaround might actually be to shrink the size of the grid. Wait, hang on a second. I don't know why I didn't bother trying this before, but what if I just made the block displays a little bit smaller? Okay, yeah, that works. Wait, how far can I go? <laughs> oh, I know what I'm doing. Herb! I know what we're gonna do today! I went back into the code and changed the scale of the block displays, the teleportation distances, and the end conditions to make the printer summon blocks that are just a little bit smaller. Just to use as an example, I chose this palace that I built with a friend because it fits perfectly in a 4x4 chunk area, which means 64 by 64 blocks. So we'll print with that same resolution. That means, theoretically, we should be able to fit this whole palace in one block of sand. Like I said though, the unfortunate thing is that I have to remove all these stairs and fences and walls and any block with directional properties, because otherwise in the final print they'll have lost those properties and just all be facing the same direction. Which means it's gonna lose a lot of detail. So here's one last look at it before, and here's what it looks like after. There has obviously been a significant drop in quality. All the trapdoors and fences are gone. You can't do archways very well. The tops of the towers are less round. The other thing that has experienced a dip in quality is my frames per second. You'll be happy to hear it's not your YouTube having issues. Instead, it's actually this. I tell you what though, folks, that's bloody nice. This is the whole palace printed in one block with a 64 by 64 by 64 resolution. That is bloody lovely. You can see that there are four blocks per pixel. Obviously, this allows me to capture much finer details in a build without the use of stairs. However, my frames are tanking, and that is because every single block you see, every last one is an entity down to the last leaf. And if you've ever tried cramming a bunch of cows or pigs into one tiny spot in Minecraft, you know your game will die. And mine is currently on the verge of <laughs> By the way, for those of you wondering, this print took just under an hour and a half, but it could have taken way longer if I hadn't optimized the way the printer works. Like I showed earlier, the printer would previously work just by taking the index and moving it one block at a time throughout the print. But if there's only stuff in the middle to actually print, then all the time that the index moves throughout the block when it's not printing that section is just, it's just wasted time. So the new idea is to have it run through these blocks that it actually needs to print and then skip over any air blocks that are just unnecessary space. You might think that adding this functionality to the printer would be a lot of work, but here's the live clip of me coding and testing it. Uh, wow. Wow. It took one line of code. Just from that one command, it went from running like this to running like this. 
And that's pretty much it. If you want to print stuff for yourself, there's a link down below where you can download the data pack and just drag it and drop it into your world. Then just use the function place, then function initiate to start printing. Just keep in mind where you run the function initiate, it'll run from the lowest X, Y, and Z values. So the bottom corner of the cube. I also added three different levels just so that you can print in 16, 32, and 64 resolution. Print yourself a tiny house, a statue, a window, flower pot, or you can print random stuff like this. Oh my gosh, what's it making? What is that? What is that? Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I ran out of space for all the letters, so subscribe.